right. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You look very nice. Thank you. I would nah. say the same to you. Thank I love you. It. Thank you. You know me and my little fashion over. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's cheap. You know, everybody ain't can't afford Zara. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, um, uh, this has been a long time coming. Me and you have been in communication, I want to say for about a month and a half, maybe two months. Yeah. And um, your story is so just extravagant. Um, it's emotional that I want to allow you the floor to introduce who you are. And then I'll I'll do my thing. All right, cool. Um, I'm just loud. Okay. That's what um I guess professionally known as. Um, but everyone calls me JL uh, for short. I am a childboard industry baby. Don't know if you heard that term before. Mm-mm. Um, long story. But um, Billboard charting artist for alternative rock. Okay. Um, 2019 made history by being one of the first African American males to chart Mm -hmm. um on the billboard charts for alternative and radio and all that good stuff and um yeah i'm just a producer love music and love uh being a servant okay i've I've heard your music and i gotta say your music is definitely um i would say missed right now because um it needs to be heard um very different sound like i said we picked up the weekend we picked up some michael jackson a lot of the greats and i think if anybody deserves a spot, it should be you. Thank you. Now, do you want me to address you as JL or just Just Loud? JL. JL. <laughs> For sure. She's like, okay, JL. I'm going to retire Just Loud. So. Now, you reached out to me um, mm-hmm. via Instagram um, mm-hmm. to tell a very painful and emotional story. Mm-hmm. Um, you feel as though your, I wouldn't say childhood, but your youth um, has been robbed from you. Mm-hmm. from very well acclimated artists okay mm-hmm. artists whom we followed for um such a long time artists who have and i have to say allegedly because of course i wasn't actually in the room mm-hmm. when a lot of these things were going down all i have is the receipts here which are a lot and um if our viewers want to access these receipts do i have permission to put these on my private site I mean- it is what it is. Okay, yeah. and we'll leave the link below because we do have a new private site, okay? So do not go to Patreon. This is for the viewers, okay? Uh, I'll announce that later. Uh, however, um, before we get into all of this, you were how old when you entered the music industry or business? So um, 15 years old, I was able, one night I stayed up. Like, okay. I was staying at my teacher's house, and I stayed up during AOL Connection Days. Okay. And um, I decided to find out at that time, John Legend was my idol. And um, I spent the whole entire night uh, doing the manager's first name and last name with every possible email that he could have. And um, it was about 200 and something emails that I sent out. And I was able to find the right manager for John Legend. And that's how it started. At 15. So what happened when you contacted John Legend's manager? So he had a, I think John was on a tour and he had an uh, automatic response saying that he's out on the road. Okay. So I knew I had locked, you know, locked in with the right manager for John. And that's how it just pretty much started. I started contacting him being a pest, you know. Um, I mean, you got to do that if you want to get your foot in the door. I love your passion. Yeah. Yeah. So... So when I got older, I always stayed in contact with John's manager. He was the tour manager at the time. Um, when I got old enough, I just moved from Virginia, where I'm from, okay. and went to New York, where um, John's management was at. And um, yeah, that's how pretty much I started in the game. Okay. So from there, it's safe to say, like, you started, did you, were you able to kind of write some songs, get some songs um, to other artists to sing, or were you recording your own demo per se? How how did it go down? What you did link with John Legend's artists, and we're gonna get into the good stuff. But I, right. I really want people to see you for who you are first. Yeah. Okay, we do a lot of mess on this channel. Yeah. All right. Okay. And so I think it's only fair before we get into you know this mess because this is I mean every time I read one of the text messages here, I'm just blown away. Yeah. And and the emails mm-hmm. at how much you were. Um, and I, like I said, I have to say, allegedly taken advantage of, used, mm-hmm. abused, mm-hmm. 
Okay. Um, and so you are in New York and are things going great? No, <laughs> I, I pretty much what happened was um, with the trash bag, went up to New York with $275 and waited until his name is Jeff Christie. He was okay. the tour manager for John. I waited until he got off the tour run that he was doing with John. Um, and I was pretty much at the cutting room. That's okay. the studio that John Legend records out of. So I would pretty much sleep there in front of the studio and be there all the time. Um, so when I first got up there, I was pretty much homeless. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody's homeless when they move to New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank know God. some people who are extremely yeah. successful now who were homeless yeah. <laughs> in, in New York. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so with the trash bag and the Boost mobile phone, mm -hmm. um, I was able to actually connect with one of the um, producers at the cutting room. Okay. And um, he produced for like your Madonna's and really good guy. And um, he sent me over a record contract. Oh, wow. Yeah. It took a minute. He didn't know I was homeless until he figured it out. And um, they gave me a contract and I used that contract to send to Jeff um, Christie, who was the management for John and to, you know, strike yeah. interest. And he told me, don't sign it because it was a 360 deal. Yeah. Um, I was able to move in with the producer at the time. Okay. And when I told them I could not sign it, um, I was back to being homeless. I had to wait until Jeff Christie came back off the road from John. Okay. And did he eventually give you an opportunity? He gave me an opportunity. I think it was more so now that I'm older and I can look back. I had a lot of cleanup to do. Okay. Um, I wasn't like your average artist per se that was new to, I, I guess, how people function and how people just maneuver through life. I grew up in a different type of environment where okay. it was, you know, life was not, you know, easy in a sense. And I didn't know much, but Jeff was a person that I stayed at his house and I was able to you know, kind of grow by living under his roof. Okay. So would you say that Jeff Christie did you right as opposed to um, what we will be going over here in a second? So you think he did right by you? I do believe he did right by me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it took a long time to get to that point, but he did. Okay. Yeah. Um. So after, I guess you've evolved, because um, eventually you moved on, mm -hmm. Um. Did you move on directly to Heather Hunter or was it another stepping stone before you got to? And I mean, she is an adult film star, mm -hmm. um, porn star, mm -hmm. um, very well connected yeah. in the music industry as well as um, the movie business as well. And so if anybody is an 80s baby, 90s baby, um, you've heard Heather Hunter. Mm -hmm. And so um, and that's kind of where things just took a turn, per se. Now. You said when you um, were coming up, of course, um, we don't get to choose right. where we grow up or who our parents are or what our situation is. The only thing we can do is do the best with it. And so when you are trying to pursue um, your dream, which you are extremely talented at, this is mm -hmm. not a game. Like you're giving up everything that you have to go after what it is that you love. And so after Jeff Christie kind of, you know, gives you that stamp of approval mm -hmm. What happened next in New York? So uh, from New York, it was the BET Awards time. Okay. And never, you know, I would say first, I grew up in a condemned house. So no shower. We legit had to. We had one kerosene heater and we would bathe. We'll put like the pot. The mm -hmm. silver pot that makes the whistle noise. Mm -hmm. We will use that to bathe. I got in. one of those upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> so, I make my tea. <laughs> yeah, okay. So and the I grew up church, but it was a different type of church. Mm -hmm. You know, we could not um, go to movies. We couldn't watch TV. Go to skating rinks. Couldn't wear shorts. My mom couldn't wear makeup. Um, mm. It was really strict. So a lot of life I wasn't able to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so Jeff got me to go to the BET Awards. Well, now I know that he kind of finagled me in the BET Awards. Mm -hmm. um, I was with Kid and Play. Okay. Um, yeah. And <laughs> Jeff 
had an idea that I was like the next Lenny Kravitz. So it was his idea. I can see that. Yeah, like when I, I think I only to because I'm light skinned yeah. though. No, <laughs> your music. Okay. You know, you you are alternative, but at the same time, we do get the R and B feels. We get yeah. the the uh, jazz feels. I mean, it's a lot kind of. In, you know, uh, uh, integrated into your sound. Yeah. So I can definitely see that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so we did a, like a music video, whatever. And we went out to the BET Awards when I got out of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Kit has always been one of my mentors. Okay. Play never liked me to this day. I don't know why he doesn't like okay. me. Um, but coming out of the car, Everyone was like, Lenny, over here, over here. Mm -hmm. And they rushed me into the BET Awards so fast. No one knew that, hey, I was not Lenny Kravitz. And I got like <laughs> a really good seat, you know, um, <laughs> love it. sitting beside Kid. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I so it. Okay. Um, I'm in L.A. and um, Jeff's cousin, who she does a lot, a lot of movies, mm -hmm. um, movie star hair and okay. makeup. One day I'm just like on a computer and I'm like, this lady keeps telling me that Wyclef wants to meet me and work with me. Okay. Wyclef John. Why, yeah. Wyclef John. Uh, the original member. Well, the member of the Fugees. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So growing up the way I, how I did, I n never knew about a Heather Hunter. Number okay. one, I knew of Wyclef because um, it was a song that um, it's a song that he did. And my school did a fashion show. Okay. And he was the singer on it. And oh, okay. Yeah, so that was like my connection. That's the same guy that was used at the fashion show. Okay. okay? So was this before or after his star starting? It was. Say that again. Was it before or after he was? You know, because the Fugees. I mean, they. It was they're... him solo. Okay. Solo. Um, okay. I think it was. It was like I forgot the the song, but. He, he, he was always in my my ear because I I like to I'm not a collector of music okay. I'm more so a collector of sound, so like his sound is something that I collected if that made sense. Okay. Um. So did the music video. I'm in L. A. Um. At Paula's house. That's Paula Abdul. Cousin. No, not no, Paula. Paul. I wish. Oh, okay. Um. And I'm like this lady Heather Hunter keeps saying that. Why Clef want to work with me and want, wants to meet me? And her fiance at the time was like, who did you say? I said, Hud the Hunter. And he was like, stop lying. Mm. So I'm like, I'm not lying. Come look at, she hit me up on Facebook and she had been sending me messages for a very, uh, I would say like three months mm -hmm. and I never paid attention to it. Come here, you sweet bitch. I just love you so much and you will too. Wine old sweet bitch wine is the champion of the Moscato game. If you like sweet, fruity, dessert tasting wines with a little sparkle, then get your sparkle on with sweet bitch wines. Oh, and don't think they just stop at Moscato. They also have other options like Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. There is something for everyone, so don't be a salty bitch. Go check them out on Instagram at Sweet Bitch Wines for recipes or just to learn more. I promise you, you'll love it, you sweet bitch. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha. K for 50 percent off one item plus free shipping in the u.s and canada some exclusions apply now but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come so when i say it's heather hunter he comes over to the computer and was like oh my god that's really really heather hunter at that point i have to google who who you know who mm -hmm. she is and honestly still 
raised in church, I'm like, okay, no, <laughs> you know, I'm good, but I still want to Because you did see some of her work. Yeah. And yeah. what she really was all about. So were you taken aback? I mean, so obviously you were taken aback by um, a porn star reaching out to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was. Okay. But I was kind of like, wait, if she's hitting me up, like, I mean, how come Wyclef didn't hit me up? So it was like kind of that moment. Yeah. So he told me to call her. And that's... Keep, keep talking. Though. That's keep when talking. I called her. Okay. I called her and... Um, I remember going into a room um, mm-hmm. and like I say, I'm always grateful to be in a house with the shower with, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it was like not how I grew up. Mm-hmm. So when I'm in the room, like as soon as she answers the phone, it was just like, like in my church days, it's like full of seduction, you know, mm. and we wound up being on the phone for about two hours. And I think that's when everything just started. Okay. Yeah. Now, at this time, because obviously, you know, are, are we free to talk about your sexuality and yeah, how yeah. you identify? Okay, so mm-hmm. you do identify as a gay man. Yeah, as of last year, October. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and at the time, what year was this when you met Heather? Uh, I think it was like 19 or 20. Okay. Yeah. So you were sh- you were straight. Like, I, or yeah. in my head, I was I was okay. straight, but in my actions, I was probably just as gay. As okay, could be. was it something that the church kind of putting you to not act upon? Uh, Although a lot of the pastors are dibbling, dabbling. Yeah. Okay. And you know that was like how I was raised. You know that homosexuality, you're mm-hmm. gonna go straight to hell. So it was always something that I was working on, and you know. Um, I wasn't presented the right situations growing up. So mm-hmm. um, it was just something that I never wanted to accept. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So. so let's talk about the relationship with you and Heather Hunter, because we have some very disturbing emails here. I mean, emails detailing mm-hmm. abortion, neglect. Mm-hmm. Um, they sound very as if someone is really trying to make you feel terrible mm-hmm. about the way you did them okay now mm-hmm. we'll put white club john's uh information to the side for a second okay? okay because all of this started with heather hunter and so an email that came in on september 16 2015 from heather hunter um i hope you're proud of yourself i'm in the hospital now emergency room it seems like i'm having a miscarriage your selflessness and abandoning me one mm-hmm. now I take it your relationship started off pretty good. Um, well, it's it started off pretty much that I, of course, like I said, and I'm going to keep reiterating that I didn't know much about life yet. Okay. So she was my the first time I met Heather. Uh-huh. It was a situation I brought one of my um, Jeff's colleagues with me. Okay. And um, she opened up the door with red lingerie on. <laughs> Okay. You know, the first time you met her. First time I met her. So you 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 smashed. He, he, two days after I met her. And okay. That was my first uh, lost my virginity to her. D- damn! Like I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. My the first time you ever had any type of sexual contact mm-hmm. was with Heather Hunter. Yeah. Who is I want to say twenty years older than you. It was like twenty three, twenty four. Twenty three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she is. Well into her 50s, almost 60s, if I'm not mistaken. She was well, I I think she was more so in her early 40s. Early 40s, so now she's in her 50s, okay. Um, Before we give up, please, from Heather Hunter, let's go to counseling together. Get the help we need. We deserve to try how... Try how can you give up on us so easily? Eight years are worth something. Just think about it. Mm -hmm. So eight years you were with this woman. Nine. Nine, Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I lost our baby. Okay, from Heather Hunter. Um, You know what? I realize I'm actually really over us. It's not like I really want to be with you again. Fuck you again. That would be nice. I mean, the emails are just all the way you took and destroyed my heart into pieces. So what happened? Um, Now that I'm older, I I think I kind of understand it. Mm -hmm. It. It was a situation when she has this kind of power that, you know, a lot of people have that's in the porn industry. And that's 
been able to seduce and manipulate. So pussy power. So you know yeah, how to that, okay that. And so, she also had the iconic figure power, where a lot of people that was around her mm-hmm. was either the yes men or women. Mm-hmm. Um, she made sure that her environment was always conducive to keeping her um, her name big and large. If that makes okay. sense. Okay. So. Um, now, at the time, I, I know you did mention when you and I sat down and we kind of did like a preliminary interview, um, you talked about her still working in the industry while dating you. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't working as a porn star at okay. that time, but she had a um, a modeling agency type of feel where if you want to shoot nude, you know, you book her, she'll shoot you nude and pretty much she'll put together a package where you can have all your news, you know, in one little gallery Mm -hmm. thing online. And then celebs can go to it and pick whoever they want, I guess. Okay. Now this is what I'm, I'm having a hard time. Uh, How many times did she get pregnant by you? I think like close to nine, nine times. And Mm -hmm. what happened all nine times? Uh, Miscarriage. Um, miscarriage, miscarriage. Why was she having so many miscarriages? Did, the doc- did you go to the doctor with her? Um, some I don't know if she was actually pregnant, but oh. you know we we partaked in drugs a lot. So okay, what I type know, of drugs? If you don't mind me asking, um, coke, shrooms, acid. <laughs> it okay. was everything. So you think when, by the time she found out, it was already too late because she was getting high? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, y'all were getting high. Yeah. And I have to say allegedly for her because I yeah. wasn't there. Allegedly. Um. Been crying for days now, she writes, June 23rd, 2016. You hurt me so much. I feel you took my soul from me. I don't want to die. And then she goes on June 26th, that same day. uh, If there is hope and a chance for us, we can allow this. We can't allow this to happen anymore. I really need to hear from you to know you're okay, to know I'm being foolish and dumb waiting for you. Do you want me to go away? I mean, it's just so much. Um, So... Couldn't help it. Had to show you my tattoos. They're amazing on how they came out inside me for life. So, um, nine years, nine alleged miscarriages. When did you meet Mr. Mr. John, Mr. Wyclef John? He came in, well, for the first three years, me and Heather being together, I had to keep it a secret. I couldn't let my family know. Your family know what? Who I was dating. Heather was, Hunter? Yeah. Okay. Um, that was part of... I our, mean, if you were my son, it wouldn't go down. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would have burned them. <laughs> and I'm not talking about with yeah. no STD. I'm sure she's had plenty of those. But um, I'm just saying from a mother yeah. who has a son, seeing a woman like this, I mean, it's pretty much, mm-hmm. you know, everyone knows her reputation. So, of right. course, she they typically prey on younger, more naive, yeah. more oblivious yeah. Men or women mm-hmm. um, in order to feel some type of love that they can't get because they've mm-hmm. given themselves out so much, mm-hmm. you know, so. Um, and I think you hit it on the, the nail. That's okay. all it was. It was like I came in and was super grateful. Um, I was super ready to work with Clef. I was super happy that I had somewhere to lay my head. Okay. So it was a bunch, a combination of all of that. OK. Yeah. Um, I have some beautiful memories of us always when I masturbate. Okay. Um, now, Mr. Wyclef John is married and has been married since I believe 1994. So 1994, 14, almost 30 years. Um, her name is Claudette G. Mm-hmm. And have you ever met Miss Claudette? I met her in distance at the Brooklyn Bowl um, upstairs in the dressing room. Okay. Who Um, introduced you? No one introduced me to her. Okay. But she knew who I was. And, of course, with Heather, you know, Mm -hmm. I guess she always viewed Heather as being a family member. But I never met her. I didn't even know Clef was married until that show. What was the relationship between Heather Hunter and why Clef John, according to you and what you saw? So, because that's an interesting relationship that he would have such yeah. a close, 
alleged close mm-hmm. relationship with Heather Hunter, mm-hmm. um, being that she was a porn star mm-hmm. and he was very much married. Mm-hmm. So I think with, with Heather and, and I mean, I only have the situation with Clef, but I've seen it a thousand times. Uh, normal, normally people with power, a lot of men in the entertainment business, especially they're alpha men and alpha males. So when they get to her door, they no longer are that alpha male. They mm-hmm. want to be submissive. Okay. So they, they're no longer alpha at all. And she was the dominant one. So I think that over she, Wyclef. Yeah, what Clef and anybody that came through those so doors. So according to you and what you saw, were they sleeping together? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How many years? I, I think, I don't know. Like, I would like to know that myself. But okay. it's it's been a situation for what <clears throat> Clef wants okay. and for what his body responds to. Heather was able to give it to him. And what do you what do you mean by what his what he wants and what his body responds to? Heather was able to give it to him. What did she give? Very married Wyclef John. Uh, it's that the whole like I tell people like you know there's something that's more powerful than money is secrets. Okay. And, and that's one of the issues with Heather. She has a, so many secrets that she holds from so many alpha males that's out there. And one of the secrets are um, is is being submissive. So. It's being whatever you think submissive is and bending over doggy style and taking it up the ass. That's submissive. You mean her giving it to him at mm-hmm. his request? Exactly. Okay. Had you seen her give it to him? Never. Okay. Never. I don't think I could handle seeing that. Why? Because, uh, you know, just like your first, you know, whoever you've had that first moment with. You know, I was completely in love with her, you know, so yeah. everything that I did was to make sure that she was happy because she had a very, very hard life. So how did you know that she was giving it to Wyclef from in whatever position he wanted, whether it was from the back of the ass, where? How did you know that? Uh, started connecting the dots. The more... More time went by and years went by with us, okay. with Heather. She will always, especially in coked out moments, she would just give me a little bit more of the truth, a little bit more. It was like always spoon feeding me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did see other people come in that I knew what they were doing, but I was always on the cabana. She, what you mean you knew what they were doing? What other people? You're some directors that have passed away some actors that still you know doing their thing um do you know who i mean you care to share any names i can share one okay malcolm jamal warner Uh, okay so what was he doing um and i have to say allegedly allegedly, i wasn't there (laughs) you were there this is your story but what was malcolm jamal warner doing with Um, heather hunter he liked to play dress up (laughs) Dress yeah. up how? Dress up, like dresses. And you put on the dresses and he becomes submissive to Heather. At his request or her request? Both. I think they all have been doing that for years. Did they pay her? I don't. I paint Secrets is more powerful than money. It was an outlet. It's like I know where I can go to be myself and to do get all of my fetishes out of the way. I can go to Heather Hunter's house and she has a younger boyfriend, fiance, baby dad, you know, that's naive. That's super humble. That's all. Don't know any movie stars, directors. I didn't grow up knowing these people. Mm. I would see them come in and. And they would just go to the back and get serviced and leave. uh, She will make me disappear. It it was one of those. I didn't pick up on it until years later. Um, she'll have her assistant or driver to take me out or she'll tell me I need to go out, you know, because I'm, I'm a house person. Like I'll stay at the house all day and I still do that and just okay. make music. So when it was time for someone to come in, she would always lead me somewhere else or ask someone, hey, go take him to the bar. Let him, you know, he has you've been in the house for two weeks straight. You know, just go out, enjoy life, and mm-hmm. here goes some money. I think that was the 
Here go the coke and here go the money. Have fun. So she gave you cocaine and money. Co- yeah. Not this allegedly. Yeah. To go off while she, quote, service. Do her session. These high profile yeah. A-list celebrities and, and mm-hmm. musicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Well, okay. So, um, and this happened the entire nine years you guys were together. It happened the whole entire nine years and I didn't find out all of the truth until 28. <laughs> so what, what, how did you find out the truth? Um, found bathroom floor. Um, both of us was coked out for about two weeks. And now when you say coked out, you mean like meaning you lock yourself in a room and just do coke for days. From the time you, you get up. Well, not even get up. You go to sleep, you know, you go through. We had a cycle and we will always have parties. Well, she will always have parties. OK. Um, so it was always something going on at the house. OK. Um, but this particular at 28, um, we was on the floor in the bathroom and it was a situation where like the more lines she did, the more lines I did. And then it got to a point where she just looked at me and she always felt like she was about to die. Every time I left or go somewhere or try to get away from her, it was always an emergency and I would always come back, you know? So this particular day. She was like, I have to be honest to you about a lot of things. And it was like, okay, here we go. What is it? You know, and that's when she just really started, you know, um, apologizing. And, and and the things that I knew what was going on I, as I got older, mm-hmm. she would always make it seem like that I was crazy or delusional that it wasn't happening. Um, 28, she just told me everything. Okay. At 28 years old. Yeah. Okay. Um, so somewhere down the line, you met Wyclef and mm-hmm. there are messages and text messages that have to say allegedly, but mm-hmm. these are very in depth and I don't see you. Well, I mean, I don't know. People do a lot of crazy stuff, but I can't see anybody making something like this up right. in this detail. I mean, it even has PTT 2016 425 WA00.opus file attached. That's how detailed these messages are that are allegedly between you and, you know, I want to say Academy Award winning Grammy artist, not Academy, but Grammy Award winning artist, um, Wyclef John, who has been married um, to a woman for almost uh, 30 years. So at what point did you and Wyclef in... While you were in the relationship with Heather, I take it this was something you weren't supposed to do or was supposed to do. Like, wh- at what point in the relationship did he kind of come into what the what the two of you had? OK, so let's rewind. When I finally got to Heather, right, I was able to meet Clef probably two weeks later. Oh, after she reached out on Facebook. Yeah. After, okay. Well, after I moved into her house, I moved into her house like probably a week after I met her. Damn. Yeah. She sent the car at three o'clock in the morning and um, told me to leave everything there. Um, she had put in my head that Jeff was taking advantage of me and Clef really wants to work with me. And so three o'clock at night, I ran away. I got an SUV and the SUV took me to her house. Okay. So, and two weeks later, how did you, what was your first meeting with Clef? Um, at his studio. At his studio. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, was he able to listen to any of your music? How did that, that initial He visit? listened to everything. Everything okay. that, everything that I ever created up until that time, he listened to. And he, never forget, he's sitting at the computer and I'm sitting beside him and he will look at, listen to certain records and he would just stare at me, you know? And at that time, I thought it was like, he's really into me as an artist, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And then I do remember the conversation that him, Heather and I, we had, and it was like, just know Heather had told him how I grew up, that they was gonna put me up. Um, I was gonna have, the word was living quarters. Okay. Um, He was gonna have a living quarters for me I wouldn't have to worry about my my family, you know, that they were going to be fine. He's going to work with me. He's going to pay Jeff Christie X amount of dollars 
to get me out of that a production deal that I was in with Jeff Christie at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was like, everything is up from here. But in the meantime, stay with Heather. Okay. Yeah. And you stayed with Heather. Yeah. Fell in love with Heather. No, not initially. No, I just, I was doing the whole sex thing because it was entertaining. Like I just had to go to the brain of entertaining and it was never supposed to be a, a thing. I was supposed to be working with Clef. Okay. So this pretty much was a promise. You're thinking this is my second opportunity to actually get into the industry. And now my career is going to take off because you have Y Clef John sitting in front of you, listening to all your music. He has requested you. Heather has brought you and you're thinking up I go. Mm -hmm. But Instead, it's just sex, drugs, and according to you, grooming. Yeah. Now, grooming. you did say to me, before, you know, during our preliminary interview that Heather told you the reason she reached out to you on Facebook. We're talking about a 40 plus year old woman reaching out to someone who's barely 20. Um, is because... Wyclef John had asked her to reach out and groom you for him privately. Mm -hmm. Almost. I didn't find that out until 28. Okay. So from what I understood, he was obsessed with my first music video. Now, when you say 28, what what do you mean by that? 28, because that's when All the Truth came out. Oh, when you were 28 years old. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So um, he would come in and out throughout all of those nine years. Okay. So he would come in and he will leave out. He, Clef, someone's coming today. It was like, who? And oh, Clef was coming. Yeah. And so it was always, uh, I had given up on music at that point. Like, Why? Why did you give up on your dream? Um, because it was, I think my life was good at that point. Like I, my family, was taken care of. Mm-hmm. I was sleeping. I was able to do music. Who, who took care of your family? Um, Heather and Clef. Wow. So they sent money to your family. Yeah. So from my understanding at 28, Clef had paid her a large lump sum of money to groom me for him, but it was definitely not for music. And when you say groom me, what, what was that? What does that mean? Meaning that, okay, so you remember when I was saying, like, the alpha males, they want to be submissive? Yeah. yeah. I think when Heather found out doing a sex act one night, Mm -hmm. she had tucked her finger and was playing with my anal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I'm like, I never did that before. You know, don't do that again. I felt uncomfortable. Um, And it clicked. Like, I've never... You know, even though I'm fighting if I'm gay, if I'm straight. But at that moment, I'm straight. So but I never had a gay moment as penetration, me penetrating a guy or a guy penetrating me ever. um, When she found that out, she realized that I was telling the truth that I've never been penetrated because she she said I was super, super tight, you know, in that sense. And then she realized that I probably was not going to be a good candidate for Clef at that moment um, because I was not interested in being penetrated by a guy or me penetrating a guy. Text messages read on 4-6-2016 between you and Y Clef John. Now you have, he is abbreviated as YC. You are abbreviated as JL. Y Clef says, perfect. And then he goes on to say, three doors, pick me. And then he goes on to say, straight, buy, or try. You reply, JL, try. And then he replies, your turn. And you say, have you heard of Demi? I'm more of that than anything when you get a free time whenever we should have a combo face-to-face without fear, shyness, etc. It will be a while to open up, bro. Just keep it at 100 until we have to talk with hope that you will be receptive. Wyclef or YC allegedly, and I have to say allegedly, responds, fear is not in my DNA. And uh, he says, shyness is. And then you say uh, what he says naturally. And he says, tell me about it. And you, and you say, bet, which door would you like to open out of all three? He says, 
all three. And um, as I as I scroll down, and like I said, I'll make these messages available to the winos on our private site that we just built, um, TashaKLive.com. Okay, it's an app. Um, Wyclef says on 4-16-2016, later that day, like an hour later, says, what do you battle with? And you said cigarettes. <laughs> we talked about that before the show started. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, uh, you said bad habit. He goes, okay, that's one, what else? And then you go, I'm thinking. And then Wyclef allegedly says, so your turn to ask me anything. You say... Um, your biggest pet peeve, he comes back with a picture, file attached, and then you send another picture. Why Clef says racism. And I thought that was very important because he is very into civil rights, especially mm -hmm. for Haiti um, or any uh, blacks of that nature. And then uh, you agree. And later that afternoon on that same day, April 6, 2016, tell me where to stop now. Uh, you say ass or tits and then you hit question mark and Wyclef says both. Mm -hmm. And then Wyclef says, I love ass though to you. And then you say, you sent an image and I guess it was maybe a picture of your private and you say, let's play thick dick throbbing at the moment. I could beat it out of me. What would it be best to wait? White Club says, explain I'm from Haiti, LOL. And you said you don't get it. And then he says, tell me. Um, and you say, I've been holding on to the same nut from last night in bed, waiting for my baby to come home to finish what we started. I'm sorry. I know your fiance is here. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Is this too much? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Wyclef says, wow, that's fucking sexy. And I mean, these messages, I mean, I can read forever. And let's talk about on 4-9, uh, 2016 at 8.58 PM. Wyclef allegedly says, it's just higher thinking. You say, got you. Wyclef says, like when I, like when I look at you, you see it. And then Wyclef says, me sucking your cock. Mm. And then you said, it's been my fantasy since our first night in the studio with you, baby, waiting patiently. Six plus years or so, he goes, that's beautiful. I am super attracted to you. And then later on that night at 9.08 p.m., you says, fucking with you, LOL. He says, LOL. And then Wyclef, John allegedly says, my ass is very tight. Now, I don't give a shit what your sexuality is. Yeah. What I have a problem with is down low men. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, do you feel that it's right to be not honest about your sexuality? Now, it's different in your case because mm -hmm. you had no idea who you were. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you have to experience certain things in order to figure that out. However, how long did it take? Into this relationship, because it says six years you've been waiting since that night in the studio mm -hmm. to, you know, do what you got to do with him. You said you didn't find out that he was married until how many years? To the Brooklyn Bowl. I don't know what year that was. It's on YouTube. I, he okay. did the Brooklyn Bowl. That's when I found out he was married. I was never interested in following or finding out who he was because he was more so family in that okay. sense okay. you know um yeah okay yeah. now of course i'm sure this led up to an encounter when was your first sexual encounter with wycliffe so first sexual encounter was i coked up again i think we had the acid um or shrooms one of them and she kept saying that clef is coming Okay. Um, Clef had brought me like an orange mic that's similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, I think that night I really thought that he was going to like, he was definitely going to dive into my music career. 
Okay. This uh, was after the mes- messages that you guys had sent. No, this is before oh, the messages. Okay. So we didn't, okay. it took a long time for us to communicate okay. via um, WhatsApp or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So he would come, he would come in. So the way how, and it's not, let's take it off a of cliff for a sec. The Heather's practice has always been that I was never enough because of her sexual um, desire. She always had to have multiple, you know. So it was a situation where she would only fuck me mm-hmm. in our bed. Um, but then there would be situations where I would catch her. Someone's in the bed with her. Um, and then she would explain to me that I need to open up sexually. So people would come in to watch us fuck. That was the thing. That's how it started. Other celebrities? Yeah. They would watch us fuck. And you care to name some names? No. Why not? Um, Because those people haven't done anything to me. Okay. They was just watching. And, you know, in the porn world, orgies are real in this business. Okay. And um, there was just a situation me and her fuck and... Like I, I'm still a, a high vibrating sex recovering addict in that sense. Okay. So um, it was like people will show up and I could just, hey, we want to fuck right now, and no matter who's at the house, we're gonna fuck. And that particular day of Clef first coming in, it made it seem like that I am the one that seduced him. Like, and being honest with you it made it seem like that. Like he kept saying like, you doing something to me. And I'm like, in my mind, like, hell yeah. Like I'm doing something to you because mm-hmm. at that point, like I've been around Heather so long, I know how to use what she's, what she do pretty much all day mm-hmm. when she needs something. So he slid his cell phone in. And when he came in, Heather backed away. So you and Heather were actively engaging in sex. Yeah. And he came in Mm -hmm. and she moved away for him to... She started watching. You and him? Yeah. And what happened? Um, It was a lot of... It was a lot of intimate, like, kissing and touching. Like I said, penetration, still don't do. Uh, Being penetrated, still don't do. Um, But it was more so, like, I, at that time, was... I'm going to give Heather a show. If that makes sense. Okay. So that's what it was. What do you mean her show? I'm going to give her a show because she's sitting down watching me and him being intimate with each other, but not engaged in sex. Okay. And then it turns when we have a closet in her bedroom um, and we go to the punishment closet. And that's when... What's a punishment closet? Like a sex closet or something? It's not a sex closet. It's just super small. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, that's when things changed. Um, Clef just starts to find out. I guess he found out from Heather that I've never been penetrated. And I didn't have a desire to penetrate. And he just jammed his finger and just, like, just kept going for blood. And um, at that time, I'm coked out. And to be honest, it was like, all right, shit, I'm going to do the same thing to you. Like, and it it became one of those alpha male, alpha male, like, you're not going to see me break. I'm not going at that point. I don't want dick from anybody. I don't or put my dick in any Mm -hmm. ass, you know, at that moment. I think that's when he saw me and I saw him and he became like head over heels after that moment because it didn't matter. Like I was able to meet him where he was at and he was able to leave. Penetrating each other. Yeah. Anally. Yeah. In a closet. It yeah. was more so like a, I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Who's, who's going to break. Okay. Yeah. Who's going to break. And, and take it. Yeah. Come here, you sweet bitch. I just love you so much and you will too. Wine old sweet bitch wine is the champion of the Moscato game. If you like sweet, fruity, dessert tasting wines with a little sparkle, then get your sparkle on with sweet bitch wines. Oh, and don't think they just stop at Moscato. They also have other options like Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio. There is something for everyone, so don't be a salty bitch. Go check them out on Instagram at sweet bitch wines for recipes or just 
to learn more. I promise you, you'll love it, you sweet bitch. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. AdamandEve.com. I'm talking toys, bondage, lingerie, and so much more. Plus, they have 24-7 customer service, so you can order at 3 a.m. if you ain't coming, if you get me, okay? And if something isn't working out, you can send it back within 90 days, no hassle. And if that's not enough, you can also take pleasure in knowing that 20% of their profits goes to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. So go on ahead and log on to AdamandEve.com. Use the code Tasha K for 50% off one item plus free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. Some exclusions apply now, but hurry up and visit adamandeve.com so they can make you come. And so we we ended that whole night. I don't know what else happened that night. Probably went back to fucking Heather. Um, we ended, and before you know it, is he was coming up more often whenever he was in town. And it was always that that my mind was, I want to do my music. I'm scared to get fucked, you know? Um, and God kind of blessed me, so I'm scared to fuck back. I don't know how this is going to work. So it was always that cat-mouse chase mm -hmm. throughout the years. Okay. You say on 416JL, morning, my dude, and uh, you say, how you feeling? Wyclef says, great. And then you say, I don't know what that CXXX is. I don't know. Um, so our X, instead of saying, like, I love you, we'll do Xs. Okay. Yeah. So love, great. Okay. And then you say, like an emoji, like, ah. And then he comes back and says at 118, beautiful man. And then you say, do you consider yourself a loner? No, I just hear things that others don't see. That don't see things that others don't before it happens to me. And then as we go down, it gets a little, you know, intimate. Um, at around 503 that same day, well, that next day on 4-17-2016, um, you go exactly what what does that mean? Uh, been meaning to ask you. Y Club says X kiss, mini kiss. So that's explaining what the X is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when our viewers look at this, they'll know that yeah. X means love, I guess, kiss. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, 13 X means I love you. 13 X's mean I love you. Yeah. So do you feel that this was a code so that if the messages ever came out or do you, is this is just kind of like a, a, a love language um, between you two? At that point, I mean, if you, I've been in this triangle for so many years okay. and never said anything so okay it was like i guess i didn't even like for you to even have this chat it was just one day i was trading phones and on my whatsapp i downloaded my whole chat thing not thinking <laughs> anything okay. so that's how i okay. even have this so you didn't save these for revenge no because there was no point i was okay. not trying to be an artist okay and then so he goes x kiss my many kisses to you and then he says we're wherever you like okay mm -hmm. kissing you wherever you like you says got you and then you say damn you owe me you owe me like 11 so far keep them coming Wyclef allegedly says, got you. Wyclef says, ass, nipple, cock. You say, cock, nipple, ass, if you don't flake. And then you laugh. And then he says, I don't flake. My job hours are crazy, but we good. I can kiss all. And um, as you go down further, he says, um, we good, Wyclef, my G. I have a long tongue. Okay. And I and you said I kind of figured that out already. Tell me something I don't know, of course, because you guys had. Mm -hmm. And then he says, "Why Clef at five twelve on April 17, twenty sixteen? I eat ass. Mm -hmm. Love the smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some I don't know how Miss Claudette or Claudette <laughs> Jean is going to take this, or maybe her children hearing this, but um." I mean, they go on and on, on and on. 
And this is not, and I'm sure once the messages are out, they'll be able to place whereabouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just certain things you don't lie about. Yeah. I mean, or you can't lie um, about. Now, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, so it was like some of the messages too was, I mean, Heather had already, when Clef asked her permission, if we can communicate, mm -hmm. um, and she gave him permission for us to communicate. Okay. So I was super loyal to her. If Clef said something, I will always tell her, um, hey, Clef, just text this. What should I say back? Sometimes she'll tell me what to say back, and then sometimes she would just take the phone um, to respond back. Mm. So some of them I do remember saying, um, because at that point it's like, all right, bet. Like, it's a triangle. Like, I know he wants dick from me. He will never really get it. I'm not going to be an artist no more. I'm living comfortable. Um, life is good. And yeah, so it was uh, it was just a norm thing. He just was never going to get to that point. So obviously things are really good between you guys. When did it turn bad between the two of you? It turned bad when Clef went behind, and we call it Heather Baby. Okay, so, I see that in the yeah. messages, like baby. You yeah. got a date night with baby, is what you said. Yeah. Okay. So it went, it went south the day that he, him, and I had a conversation okay. in reference to he wanted me to leave Heather, and he wanted to set me up and house whole living arrangements. He was in love with me. Um, we were meant to be, um, and that was going against my code of honor to Heather. So I was playing it off. I was like, yo, clap talking crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and now that I can replay it, it was, she, it was a bittersweet moment because it wasn't like she was mad. It was just like, stop, stop talking to him. Okay. Stop, you know, and I knew it was more to it than that. But at that point I can't stop because now like, so, you know, my whole gay thing has always been bromance. That's it. Like it was always that, like I, I was kind of grew up in a situation for seven years. I had an, uh, a bigger brother mm -hmm. that that's what we had. So it was never about sex in that situation. It was more yeah. so about the bromance. So when it got to the point where me, are, me and him was communicating all the time, or, and he's, I would just write songs and send it to him. And now you're talking about why Clef? Right? Yeah, Clef. Okay. That's all it you was. did send me some emails. Yeah. That shows the exchange between him yeah. and you sending music together. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I knew Heather was really good at, I don't need to be an artist, a recording artist. And if I was going to be an artist, I was going to die um, from drugs. Um, well, I, was I mean, just, she already had to <laughs> right, out. I mean, so. Right. But it was like all of that. And I now I know that it was never intended for me to be an artist because like I say, it was more powerful than money is the secrets. It started, I started collecting just as many secrets as she was collecting at that point. So it was a not a good idea for me to be an artist or to have a platform to speak my truth. Okay. So, of course, you guys obviously break up. Later that year, I take it after she finds out how close you and Clef are. Mm -hmm. But then you guys have this yo-yo, and that's when she's saying, I'm pregnant, you're, I want to die. And at this point, you're just ready. Are, are you ready to just leave her to go to him? Or are you ready to just leave them both alone? What's going through your head at the moment? I never found Clef attractive. <laughs> Well, I mean, you ain't like, got a point there. I mean, I, I haven't either. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't. Okay. And, like, and so it was never, I think in the back of my mind, it was like I was still hoping that one day that he will take my music serious. Okay. So you felt like you were selling yourself? I was. Okay. I was. But I was also okay with, I, I live a little minimal. Like, as long as I have a laptop, some studio speakers, and a mic, and a MIDI board, I'm fine. Okay. So I was already okay because I was able to perform when we had our orgy parties. 
in theory. So I will make songs just for that. Okay. And then the next time I make new songs. So I was okay being an artist and on that platform. At the orgy parties? Yeah, yeah. Were you singing naked? No, I wasn't singing. They, they were just hearing my music. Oh, but they, the, okay. But no one ever really knew it was me because Heather never wanted anyone to know that I did music. It was supposed to be our secret, me, Clef, and her. That was our thing. Okay. Um. So I guess what initially like just ended things between you and Clef and the reason why we're sitting here... I mean, you did tell me it's because you felt after she had admitted to you, coked out on the floor, mm -hmm. that he paid her, mm -hmm. allegedly, to groom you for him. Mm -hmm. It was never about the money. Mm -hmm. Was it after you heard that is when you were just done? I think, yeah. Okay. I can. I think 28 just hit me hard. Okay. Um, when she said it, because I think when people are going through a situation like that, mm -hmm. you always feel like something is off mm -hmm. um and i was getting older and that was the part <laughs> i she was getting older but so was i you know and it was like wait a minute like the things that i would allow instead of hey you need to go out and it's, you know go in new york go have fun you know i was like no nah, i'm not going out what, what, what you got going on you know i started the table started turning mm -hmm. Like to the point where I became the the dominant one for everyone that came in. And everyone that came in always wanted one thing to see me fold to have a sexual encounter with me on that level. And it would never happen. You, you mean other men? Yeah. That yeah. she entertained. Yeah. Was paid to entertain. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe in the Illuminati? Do I believe in it? I think it's great marketing. Why do you say that? Because it's like everyone wants to be a part of something that they're not allowed to be or have access to. Do you feel like this situation was Illuminati-ish? I, I, I think that this situation is just sick. I don't think, I think Illuminati has a little bit, if that exists, has a little bit okay. more. Um, they will at least present you an opportunity, yeah. <laughs> you know, versus taking, 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 you know. Um, I mean, I, I never really believed in, yeah. the, I guess, the cult until you came with all this stuff. Because, I mean, it took me a minute to, like, really digest everything that you were saying. And, you know, of course, everybody has their own reality of how things go. But to you, being in this situation nine years... I can see how it could be kind of overwhelming for you, you know, being mm -hmm. that there were heavy drugs involved, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, do you feel because I, I have to play devil's advocate here for a second. Do you feel that some of the drugs could have maybe altered some of your perception, you know, of how things really were? Um. No, I needed the drugs. <laughs> Why do you need them? Because my natural self is shy. Okay. Like like one hundred percent. I'm the real loner. I can see that. You know. Okay. So I would do the drugs to get me hyped hyped up. Okay. You know, to just merely entertain. So my entertainment I will use on Heather. Like I knew that certain people wanted me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I would use her, or she would use me, because she knew that I was committed to her. And that I didn't want anyone else. And I, I'm a sex person. <laughs> so okay. it was like, you know, I, I people would get off by us doing us. Okay. So. What do you want to say to Heather and, and Wyclef if they were here? Um, and, and how would you want to address how you feel they treated you? That's a rule. That was a good question. I would say like. Knowing, I, I guess, like knowing Heather's like life and her childhood, and a lot of our um, sometimes you connect with people that mirror you, mm -hmm. and we had kind of sort of similar um, upbringing okay. um, in certain ways. Um, I, I think that because of the the route that she chose to take, you know, with her life. And whatever she, you know, cut the shit. 
I think she opened up Pandora's box. Heather was very, um, made people believe that she practiced, I mean, Wicca and um, so a lot of witchcraft. Mm-hmm. So I think she dabbled so much into that life. Mm-hmm. And she always wanted to find true love. I do know that. Like, I know that without a shadow of a doubt, the core of Heather is amazing. You know, I just think that she used people how people have used her throughout this whole entire business. Okay. Um, so my heart goes out to her uh, and I forgive her and I kind of understand. Um, I just think that I kind of want to know why, you know, like why stall it out to these many years? Um, mm-hmm. I think this is a question. Was it like, did she actually at, at any given moment really love me? Okay. Um, I think that's something that I don't know. And I really don't care to know, but it was like all those things. It's like, why carry me through, through that? Like if you knew that I was for Clef and that was your main assignment is to groom me for him. Why did it take until 28 to tell me, you know, when I was already showing her that I, that I love her, I forgave, forgive her many times for cheating. I, I, I showed her that I I'm committed to her. It's like, how come she didn't do it in return, you know, mm-hmm. um, early on, you know? Yeah. What about Clef? What do you want to say to him? What I would say to him is he always, he grew up in church. Okay. And um, and I'm not a church person like that anymore, but the Bible does say something about when you have an alt against your brother, you put your gift down and you go and you ask for forgiveness. I have reached out to Clef in many, like numerous of times since I left Heather just for clarity for my manhood, I never wanted to come out as gay. You, you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I, I needed to talk talk to him, you know, and let him understand that, hey, I never saw you that way. Um, I never wanted to do anything with you. Um, I found out, Heather told me, I don't think Clef knows that I know that he paid her. And that's what I've been wanting to have a conversation with him. First, it's like, why pay her? You should have gave me that money. Mm-hmm. And to be real, like, give me, if you want me, you don't have to groom me. I'm already groomed at that point. I'm loyal. I'm, I'm a loner. I don't require much, mm-hmm. you know? Why go through all of this for me to come out as gay last year? I w- I've always been gay. It was just, I never had a person to, I guess, like, make me feel like it was okay to be who I am. You feel your fiance kind of gave you that I courage? Will. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy thing is, is up, yeah. You keep looking over there at him, yeah. He, I actually tried to bring him in yeah. um, 10 years ago. I uh, tried to bring him in because Heather always brought someone in. I didn't have any friends. So he wanted, hey, you got you got all yeah. these friends. I need somebody. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so you guys have an established history. What was his, um, I guess, thoughts of everything at the time? My fiance? Yeah. Um, at McDonald's. <laughs> Gates, was it Gates? In Brooklyn, um, he told me he, you know, he loved me. And we had, that was, my fiance was my first real male experience like that. And we still didn't do much of anything. Okay. It was just like, we were, we were closer to age. Okay. Matter of fact, like my birthday is June 4th. His birthday is June 6th. Okay. So like, we only one day apart. And he was like, kind of like my first friend that was industry based. Okay. So I tried to bring him in to meet Heather so we can be a triangle. Okay. You know, because I'm tired of her bringing everyone in. Yeah. And he respectfully declined. And he let me know that he was into me and he didn't want to share me. And so I, I had to say that, hey, I can't be with you, you know. Okay. Because my job was I worship Heather. Like, Heather can. Okay. That's all it was. It was just Heather. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. And so now 
of course you identify as gay. Um, why Clef hasn't given you the closure that you needed. It sounds as if if I were just kind of a fly on the wall, maybe she kind of got to him before you did because, you know, you weren't responding to her. And so just like she told you, don't talk to him, stay away from him. You think maybe she could have told him to stay away from you? Well, I think after we had an incident in Atlanta um, at a hotel, me and Heather did. Okay. Um, that was not too far after the me being 28. Um, we're in the hotel, and I think everything hit me at one time. Okay. Um, it was my sister. My sister was getting married. Okay. And Heather was um, going to be a bridesmaid for the first time in her life. Oh. I only have one sister, and she said that she was sick, and she couldn't come to the bridal shower. Luckily, I took my sister's ex-husband out to Atlanta to show them the town. Okay. And we parked directly in front of the hotel that Heather and I was going to stay at. So when I got to the room with my brother, um, she was getting ready for a session, and that's what she would call them. You know, um, she had her black dress on, her red lipstick, makeup, had her coke out, and she was about to just go fuck somebody. Do you feel that like she was prostituted? That she kind of made it seem like it was some elaborate type of service, but it was actually an escort service? And she had to do coke to get through the session? But, I mean... Not in Tanel that you saying that. It <laughs> kind of makes a lot more sense. I mean, nobody wants to admit that they're a prostitute. You yeah, know? I mean, it makes... I know that people, certain people, no one knew could ever come in. Okay. And that's facts. No one knew. So everyone that is around or that came around, she's been known for years and years. Okay. So... All I know is that she spent a whole lot of money and lived... <laughs> really well and I having just having sessions I, yeah prostitute yeah. that's what that yeah. was if I'm just you know gonna speak I mean it makes sense I never thought about it I like mean, that yeah prostitute and um, did did she ever protect herself during these sessions um from what I I never seen paperwork but she, Back in the porn days, how she explained it, they had to always get tested regularly. Okay. So, so she wasn't protecting herself, but she was just getting tested. Yeah, I think she got protect. I, I've never used protection on Heather. She's never burned you either? Um, I've never okay. Con- okay. tried did anything from her. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so that's she good. was, all, and that was another thing that yeah. I'm grateful for. Okay. Um, she was, she's really OCD about um, cleanliness. Okay. Um, I mean, you have to be when you have multiple sexual partners. Like yeah. That. I mean, you should be. Yeah. Because, you know. Well, I'll tell you that back. Well, she did have an, she did cheat on me with a girl and a girl messed her up. But. What did the girl do to him? I think gave her. What's that? What's the, um, I don't know. It's like she had something from the girl. The. Um, was it discharge? Was it bumps? It was, I think it was, I don't know. She was just mad at the girl for giving her something. I don't remember well, I mean, the actual You can't get mad when you put yourself out there. You put yourself yeah. out there. So, I mean, um, it's it's just an utter shame that, you know, you were just so young and vibrant. And mm-hmm. it feels like you were taken advantage of at such mm-hmm. a young age by these two extra grown ass people um, who. And, and you know why, Cliff? My thing is, is like if you're going to be gay, because there's been there's been sightings of him doing things, and people have questioned his sexuality, and he has gotten very angry about that on the internet. Like I'm not, he's like screaming from, I'm not gay. You know what I'm saying? But everything about him speaks gay, and the fact that he has this wife is kind of like a shield to do what it is that he wants to uh, allegedly do behind the scenes, whether it's put up men, pay men, groom men, and I'm sure you're not the only one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, and, and you know, Miss Heather, I, I mean, I kind of understand why she did what she did. I mean, who would want her? Given her record, her track, who who would truly, knowing who she was, would want her? And because you were so young and, and naive, it's easy to kind of, as an older woman, really seduce younger men. 
Mm. and have them do exactly what it is that you need them to do and not mm. ask questions because a grown man would ask questions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm at an awe in this. And um, I think this is just going to be part one because I'm sure that I'm going to have you back here again mm. to share some more stuff. Yeah. How old are you now? 32. Okay. Yeah. Um, my platform is always open because I'm, I'm, I know there's more. And um, like I said, I just kind of want to rest it here because we can be here for hours. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of dissecting every single thing. But whenever you want and whenever your fiance um, and you talk, I would love to have you back here to really, really. Because you've unwind a lot, mm-hmm. but there were others mm-hmm. who portray a different lifestyle mm-hmm to their wives, to their kids, and go and and seek out people such as yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked, did you believe in the Illuminati? Because I feel like, you know, in some weird way, you were sacrificed. You were sacrificed. Like, you know? Yeah. And I felt that. So, like... If that... I mean, and I have to say, if that happened, because I was not there, but I, I, I can't see that you lied. You came through with hella receipts to kind of back up your story and um yeah yeah um i just think that i i do appreciate your platform uh and i a lot of people my close people was like you know it's your time to talk and what is your why and my why is uh i work with independent artists now right and when i see their drive and then I see their excitement and they're talented. Now I feel like I have to help every last independent artist out there um, to try to block certain things from happening, mm-hmm. which sometimes leaves me dry, if that makes sense, yeah. because you can't protect everyone that comes into your 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 environment. Um, and, I just, I'm, and I don't want to cut yeah. you off. I'm not a therapist, but I feel like in some way you're trying to protect yourself, but you can't get those you can't get that back. The only thing that yeah. you can do now is focus on you. So like you yeah. kind of see yourself in them and it's yeah. like you protecting mm-hmm. yourself, not necessarily them, but you, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, I'm good now though. Yeah, that's good. Uh, my, my protection is is good. Like yeah, I'm still demisexual. Um, What's that? Meaning that I have to know you for years before ever having sex with you. Okay. Like I have to have a real connection, a real, like I have to know you in and out. Because you don't want to get caught up sexually again, like the way you were with Heather. No, I've yeah. always been that way. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Okay. I only have like, maybe like my body count is probably like a one percenter compared to the rest of the world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to add before we close up? No. You did good. Thank you didn't you. even need a cigarette. No, I did. I See? need one now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. You care to kind of sign us off with a little something? Acapella? Oh, you done put me on the spot. Yes. Um, Like, what What do you want to hear? Whatever you want to give. All right. Uh, so Frank Sinatra is my favorite artist. Okay. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars. I'm never saying another one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> that was never, horrible. I but... would have never thought Frank Sinatra. No, you sound exactly like him. Yeah, because that's only because she played him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have my things, you okay. know. I still okay. listen to our okay. same artists all the time. Now, where can um, the viewers reach you? Uh, talk to you, follow you, and buy your music. Um, well, I like I say, I'm completely. I don't know if I have officially hung up being an artist. It's like I'm kind of I'm a father to beautiful kids. Okay. Um, get married, and I like. I found out that I really like still doing music at the house and cooking and cleaning. Okay. And being domestic and paying bills. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm totally dedicated to like bridging the gap between independent artists and major brands. 
Okay. And um, giving giving them opportunities or try to fight for opportunities for them. Okay. So um, my website is jlartistfirm.com. Okay. jlartistfirm.com. And where can they find you on Instagram? I am just loud. I am just loud. J-U-S-T-L-O-U-D. Thank you, JL. Thank you. I mean, this has been a minute. We've been trying to get this done. And I think tonight was just the way it was supposed to go. Yeah. So I appreciate you. Likewise. And trust me, I, I really hope that one day, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's a few years from now, that you come and you share more of your story. I will. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right.